Hey everybody, back with another Missile Command board. I picked this one up non-working and um, I'm going to show you what it's doing here in a second, but the first thing is you can see definitely some work has been done. I don't know why that one looks weird, but this one here we've replaced. Yep. Um, let's see. That there. Is this one there? E8. Doesn't look too bad. Right there, I think. But these right here, obviously some some mess ups here or something. I don't even know if those jumpers if they fixed it correctly or not. I'm going to have to just assume they did for now. I don't see anything touching maybe this one here. I might I might remove this right here cuz that looks pretty pretty bad right there. And then this one they removed as well. This is a RAM chip. So one one RAM and then one something else at F4 right there. But I'm just going to power it up here real quick and then um, we'll sh I'll show you what it's doing. And I'm trying to think if I want to like start with the Fluke, do I want to do signature analysis or just uh, probe around with the oscilloscope. So I'm not exactly sure I had this idea of the, where I would maybe just try to use just the scope and fix the board that way. Um, but I have all these tools and maybe I should use them. Powered it on. That's what we're getting on the screen. Because my scope has a frequency counter, I do like to come to that first. So right there, we'll just check our reset pin. And it's obviously resetting. The game's not running. Um, we can press our reset button here see if it goes low let it go goes back high and we can come to our 10 megahertz clock and make sure we're getting 10 megahertz we are and then come to our 5 megahertz and we're getting 5 megahertz I can adjust this a little bit there's my clock 5 megahertz anyway if we come to our clocks signal here, uh, it's kind of weird. It might clean up a little bit if I put a ground a ground on there. But yeah, it's 1.16 or 1.17, which is which is correct. Should be 1.17 megahertz on um, a missile command. It's a little off from the 1.25. Um, if I go to my vertical sync, this this is odd looking to me. I don't know what's going on with the vertical sync, but maybe that's because the game's not running. I'm not sure. But that does not look right to me. I mean, it could be because the game's resetting. I'm not sure. So... But that's um, pretty much, you know, all I can do with the... I can come in and probe data lines on the RAM and stuff like that. But typically that's all I'm going to do with the scope. And then we can jump to either the Fluke or to um, Signature Analysis. And I don't know which one. I'm still documenting some signatures on this, so I might actually go Signature Analysis. Okay, I went down the Signature Analyzer path because... Let's see here. I wanted to document the entire horizontal counter chain and stuff. Oh yeah, let me um the one thing to know let's come here is when I was hooking up my measuring my horizontal sink, I thought it looked bad because I didn't have my oscilloscope probe grounded. Um, with it grounded I get a good 61 hertz, no problem, right? Now let me unground it 
this led me astray here. And it's like jumping all over the place at 22,000 and stuff. So that threw me off anyway. A um, little bit of a lesson learned there, ground my probe. Um, so I went through and I did signature analysis because I want to document it anyway on the horizontal sink section, the vertical sink section, and took a whole bunch of signatures. Um, actually, I'll show on the just to show on the schematic. Basically, your clock is generated over here. I mean, your um, crystals over here, 10 megahertz, and then you get a 10 megahertz clock right here. So I this is the horizontal counter chain. So I tested that counter, that counter. Um, got the H blank signal over there. Let's see. Then I hooked up to, once I got the horizontal sync, which I can't remember where it was at, but once I got the horizontal sync, then I came over and tested all the vertical counter chains here. Oh yeah, this is the horizontal sync right there. So once I got that, then I did the vertical, and once I got the vertical, I could do the vertical blank. I could also get this 3INH, I don't know what that is. I could get the row address select, um, or not row address select, I guess. I could get the, I guess that's um, something address select, DE address select, I can't remember what that is. DRAM enable address select, maybe. Dead select is DRAM address select, I think. Your column address select. So I was able to get all of these and verify this entire section um, over on the sync section. So I know on this board that's all working good. So then I went to my regular signature analysis and I came to the enables for these ROMs here, ROM 4, 5, 6, or whatever, that is, um, P, I think this is the one, P2, pin 4, P2, pin 4. Where's P2 at? P2, pin 4. No, that's not right. Oh, it was um, M5. It must be M5, pin 4. M5 is right there. And I'm getting a signature of 0003 on this one right here. All the outputs here. And that's pin 4, pin 5, pin 6, pin 7. And those are all the outputs here of M5, which is IN0, INI, IN2. So probably not our problem with getting the board to boot, because um, these are input enables, but this does not seem right. Something's still jacked up with this chip, so I'm going to replace that chip and, um, and then continue on. But not likely having anything to do with our reset. Our reset probably has something to do with the address bus reading to the ROMs or reading into the RAMs and in and out of RAM is what I'm expecting so um, and getting the data back to the CPU that's why our watchdog we were resetting because our watchdog was triggering uh, but this is something I just through address analysis um, signature analysis I determined that this is bad so I'm going to go ahead and replace that and then come back and continue all right on. before I before I actually replace this M5 uh, pin 4. Actually, I was looking at it. These IN, IN0 and IN1, IN2, they actually do enable some data buffers, uh, the, some LS244s somewhere from the inputs into the data bus. So it's possible they're not getting, well, they shouldn't be getting enabled anyway. I don't know. It's possible that this might be part of my problem. I don't know. But M5, pin 4, I just want to show what it looks like on, on a logic probe. So it is mostly high, but it is toggling. And if I look at it on the oscilloscope, 
I, if I can without messing anything up. That's what it looks like there. It's definitely toggling, but you see something's high as well. So before I pull it, what I figured I would do is just cut the pin number four here real quick. I turned it off. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to cut pin four because I'm going to pull this probably anyway. Like that. No, oh, that's probably not the greatest. No, I'll clip another one. <laughs> I don't even I didn't even leave anything to solder onto there. Yeah. Pin five, pin four. Alright, I cut some pins here just to make sure that my signature was still jacked up and there wasn't something on the output side that was kind of holding it or messing with it. So I think I think this chip, well I was going to replace it anyway, but I think this chip is definitely screwed up. Because if I cut the output pins, nothing, the only thing that should be controlling what my reading is on, on these is um, is the inputs, and the inputs are good. And it says 003, but we know it's jacked up by just looking at it on the scope. You can see there's a high line there. I mean, it kind of looks like it's good, right? I don't know. But the signature is definitely jacked up from signature analysis. So, anyway, we'll see. We'll see. All right, I replaced it. that, and it didn't work. I bent out the legs, the output legs, and I'm still getting the same signature. 0003. And that's, that's our high signature. It is toggling. I mean, there's activity but it's not reading the right signature that I had on my other board. Then, um, so I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it says here that IN0, IN1, IN2 are the outputs. These are the inputs. This is A and B. And then this is the select, number one, which is based off of this, I guess, not IO and not read. And that's what, like a NOR or something like that? Or, or NAND or something like that I don't know um, so what I'm going to do I actually looked at that pin pin 3 of this R5 I mean that's pin 3 right there let me see if I can get that a little bit better yeah not really <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. I, I then I I wanted to um, put my logic comparator on this chip, and it actually shows pin. Yeah, see, it's, it shows it bad if you can see that there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pin eleven is showing bad on this, so but not pin three, which is the output that I'm concerned about, but whatever, I'm thinking I might replace this. All right, total, whoops, is it focused? Total fault, false alarm here. Um, I must have taken the signatures on one of my, I don't know, I, I took them wrong or something. I put my working board back on just to verify this, and M5 is fine. That those. That's exactly what those should be reading, 0003, I don't, know why you can't get a good signature it probably has to do with this enable pin here um, th this is a good signature on this side of the de decoder of this LS139 because of program select is generated over here but that led me to look at this R5 this uh, 7432 pin 11 is bad and that's actually what is driving um, the MAD multi, multiplex address select delete. So that pin 11 is, is jacked up. Um, so that could be possibly part of our problem. So I am going to replace that R5 and it's just total fluke that I ended up looking at it um, because I was led astray by my wrong signatures that I took. So 
Let me replace this R5 and then take a All look. Right, have that there. replaced, put my brace kit in, and that didn't fix it. Still resetting, but um, that was bad though. If I put my logic comparator on here. Whoops. Yeah, we're, we're looking better now. As you can see, no lights are lit up. This is my old, older logic comparator here. But that was bad, and that was uh, misleading there. But um, anyway, whatever. Back to the drawing right, board. Back at this, it's the next day. I was messing around a little bit last night, and I'll catch you guys up. Still resetting and watchdogging, but I decided to hook it up to the Fluke. Um, do a bus test. The bus test is okay. And then I did, um, I read all the ROMs, and all the ROMs read good. Um, and I had, I think I mentioned on the video already, I did um, address signature analysis. So these two buffers here are the address buffers. No, the no, these two, I think. These two here, and these two are the data buffers. I don't know. Two of them are two of them are address buffers and two of them are the data buffers. Um, the data buffers specifically are coming from these ROMs. So by reading all of these ROMs, I know that these these buffers here are good um, because I was able to read you know all of those ROMs um, with the fluke fine. Um, but if I do a RAM short at zero, 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 enter, zero, one, FF, which is the working RAM. We get an immediate error on um, address zero, 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 bit one, it says, BTS one. Um, let me power on my oscilloscope. And I don't know why it doesn't say BTS zero. I don't know. There's eight RAMs. Each one has a data output line. So there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight RAMs. I would think this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So z z data line zero through seven. <clears throat> um, I don't know. It says BTS zero one loop. So I assume that's the data bit one. I'm thinking but if I look at output of pin 14 which is the output I think right that's kind of what a normal actually let me adjust this a little bit this is what a normal output looks like and this is the one on the first chip does not look good As you can see that and that's this chip right here and it also is one of the chips that has um that was replaced and there's a lot of damage on the da um, bottom side of it so what i figured i would do is just look at this a little bit more closely take this chip out um and then ohm out everything and i already did it a little bit i started just marking it out and seeing making sure pins are good and that they're connected to the right pins and they're not connected to each other and I'll come back and show you that but anyway I had to go back to the fluke there and it is giving me um, a read write error at address line zero, the first address um, BTS 01 so and this buffer chip here at P5 I guess is the buffer for the RAMs and it looks like he had um, the previous person had replaced this as well. Doesn't look like it's a new chip, so I don't know if this is potentially bad or not. Um, but I'm going to double check all the the solder work over here on this first RAM right, chip. Hopefully, you guys can see this okay. So I just removed that RAM chip right there. Actually, I could remove this other one too. And I. It would help if I looked at the schematic, but like basically pin 14 should come over here on each of these. They have their own um, 
the data line comes to this string of uh, traces down here which obviously lead over here to this whoops lead down to this buffer chip right there but one of the things you can do is just obviously just check you know So pin, all the corners should have continuity with each other, maybe. Yeah. Um, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4. Yeah, pin 4, I think, is one of the column select or row select. I can't think, I can't remember. Um, but you also want to make sure that, you know, pins aren't connected to each other. And pin three and four are connected to each other on this chip here, as you can see here. And that is, I think, I think pin four is a row select, and pin three is your data input. So pin three should not be connected to any other pin three um, because it's the data data input for that chip. And then pin 14 is the data output. And then all your address lines should be basically connected to each other. So you can kind of cl quickly verify that they're good just by going like that. It's kind of hard. You get the idea. So it's pretty easy to quickly verify them. Um, but you also want to check to see if they're connected to each other. And this one is. So we're going to fix that real quick. I wasn't looking through the camera, so hopefully that came out okay. All right, I've fixed the um, socket there, I believe. Um, those two lines being bridged together. So let's go ahead and power it up. And we're still in reset mode. Let's do a bus test. All right, let's do a RAM short, 000, enter, 01, FF, enter. All right, we're getting further than we did last time. That's good. Now we got bit zero. Okay. <laughs> Let's loop that real quick just to see. Okay, it's running to that. Bit zero. Well, our output line on that first RAM chip definitely looks better now. I'm looking at the outputs on all of these. RAM chips basically with the the oscilloscope. And all of them have oh it's a uh, data that's not the same read write error, that's a um a decode error. So something to do with either most likely the addressing coming to these RAM chips or um, maybe something you know going back to the CPU I'm not sure I have to look that up DCD error let's just continue yeah we're getting DCD errors if I hit continue so I'm definitely able to read and write to the RAM so if I do um, write at 0000, zero, zero, zero one, and then read at zero, zero, zero. So we know we can read and write to the RAM, but there's something going on with the addressing. Um, could be this buffer chip, could be something else. I already, well, it definitely, well, the addressing to this RAM is kind of crazy. The row, it, um, I have to think about that and look at the schematic. It's not as straightforward as you would think or hope. All right, All right so, I'm back looking at this, I had to do some research. So we're getting um, a, what is it called? A decoding error, I guess. Um, I forget what test it's doing, but it's basically two locations in RAM have become alias to each other. Usually it, and it's a failure of the address decoder or the address line is shorted or open or a failure in the RAM decoding. And what bit zero is saying is on the address 0000, zero, zero, zero bit zero so the very first bit and this would be zero 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 here if you look at it there's um, four bits there four bits there four bits that's 
zero, and then that's you know zero and one, and then this one is or oh, whatever. This I, I messed up, <laughs> but anyway, this is zero zero, and this is zero two, um, and then this is zero four as an example, or six or whatever. But regardless, it's this first bit right here that we're having problems with. So if I continue here, you can see zero zero. It's trying to write a, um, something in address address bit zero, the bit zero for that address um, I'm not explaining it very well, but and you can see that it's always, if I keep hitting continue, it's always bit zero. I don't know if I can get to bit one or not, but what I can do is let me re, oh dang it, ram short, zero, 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 enter, F, enter. Let's turn on our oscilloscope. We're going to loop on this error. And I looked at the schematic basically. Address line zero is pin five of these RAM chips. One, two, three, four, five. I definitely have activity there. That's, I'm just looking at all address line five of these RAM chips. So it's not, it can't, it's not open. But the thing that controls that is this F3, I think, on the schematic. DEAD0 comes from F3, the 74153, which could be. So I'm going to put, I think the easiest thing there is to look at, um, put the logic comparator on that and see, and then I'd have to find out if any of these inputs are wrong. We know, I'm sorry, you can't really see that. We know that um, 8H, 4V, 2V are all good. Vaporize could be bad. Oh, it's got to be one of these four, actually, because the these are controlling that output and these are controlling that output so there's only four things 2V, Vaporize 0, MAD 0, and MAD 7. Uh, multiplex, multiplex address 0, multiplex address 7 those should all be controlling this output here so these four inputs and that output and we'll just trace it back. I put my comparator on there and the chip looked good F3 so I started looking at the inputs um, Let's compare MAD multiplex address uh, 0, multiplex address 7, pins 12 and 13. Let's look at those on the scope here real quick. Uh, if I can get my stuff out of the way. Alright. That's 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's MAD. 07 and then the next one doesn't look like it's doing really anything or something it doesn't look the same here's another multiplex address line so that's what I think they should be looking like so I'm gonna trace it back I think MAD 0 we'll gotta find out where that's coming from but I think that might might be our issue. It doesn't okay, right. trace that back. MAD zero. Hopefully, you guys can see this. MAD zero is um, this LS157 at H2. Went ahead and got my comparator. Already had the card hooked up. Hooked up my comparator. Output four is bad um, based off of the comparator. So we know the inputs are good. Output four is MAD zero. So we're going to replace that right there, LS157. I figured actually before I replace it, um, we'll 
one, two, three, four. We'll look at it on the scope. It is got nothing there, flat lined. And then I'm going to cut that pin and just verify that there's nothing pulling it like a short or something like that um, that's messing it up. So let me cut that pin and right, just I make cut sure. That pin right there. Yep, it's still flat lined. So I'm going to cut that chip out, replace it, um, and then come right back. All right, got that replaced. Uh, LS157, 74 LS157. Even I had some difficulty. I cut the chip out, and I still managed to pull out a trace, um, which sucked. But um, you're not going to be able to see it from, from the underside. So fixed it on the top side, and let's power on. See if we get anything. Nope. <laughs> more um, set up more angle force. So I know. Yep, not getting anything here. Sorry. Um, let's do a RAM short, 000, zero, zero enter, 01FF, enter. Hopefully it's uh, better than last time. Cool. Alright, so now we're still not running our... Pr game's still not able to run, though. But it does not look like we're resetting. If I hit run unit under test, enter... Um, I don't see the screen flashing, so it's not watchdogging. It doesn't appear to be anyway. Let me go ahead and run some more memory tests and then come back if it, I'll, I'm not gonna film everything. I'll just come back if it, I get in there. All right, it looks like our RAM's okay. Not sure why our game's not running. Um, interesting. So all of our RAM's good. I might actually clean up this RAM and test it again. But uh, let me do some investigation, just getting a white screen here. So. All right, I checked some stuff and I figured I'd put it in my cabinet because I can't hear anything at, my, at the uh, bench there. But it sounds like it's playing. So, which is good news. It doesn't do anything in test mode. If I switch it in the test mode. So it sounds like it's passing the self-test. Um, I assume so. Back to the bench. It's not outputting any video. But we know it has sync. It's just a white screen. So I have to think about what that is. Okay, on a hunch because... Well, I did check this, whoops, I already powered it on, but I checked this RAM here. It was socketed. This is at um, L7. It was socketed. It's not a great job, but it looks like it's okay. But when I check the output, or the outputs, there's four outputs. One, two, three, four, five is one of them. It's just stuck high. And all of the outputs are stuck high on this. Um, pin five, six, seven nine um yeah and there's one more but and let me check the in i checked the inputs too i think pin four is is a data input you see and there's there's data coming into this thing that's pin four pin six so there's definitely data coming in it's definitely, you can't really see it, but the right enable is flashing down there. If you, maybe you can see it, I don't know. Turn up the intensity just a little bit. It's kind of difficult to see. Pin three is the right enable. But you can kind of see it, I don't know. But I think it's toggling. And pin two is the select, so that's fine. 
chip enable, I mean. So the right enable is to toggling. <clears throat> the address lines are toggling, um, coming from this LS157 somewhere. Where is it? That M7. Okay, yeah, this this 157 here. Um, the outputs of this are the address um, and address lines for this RAM chip. So I think this RAM chip is bad. It's already socketed. It took me about 30 minutes, but I found I found some that I had ordered a long time ago. So I had to dig through my receipts and everything. Um, I save my receipts in email um, usually, and so I just do a quick search, and that way I can figure out if I ever ordered this stuff before. <laughs> So anyway, let me put that in the and see if The original chip is a 82S25, but you can use, I think, a 7489, 74189, 289, um, all of those. So I put that in there. Let's cross our fingers, hope this is it. Booyah! There we go. It's looking good. And I think the sounds, I think I need, in my cabinet, I need to go look to see if there's some other stuff um, <laughs> messed up with my sound. But definitely working game is working. I think I will put it in the cabinet um, just and burn test it a w for a while. Um, but yeah, it looks to be working. Working board. So... Probably need to go back and do some more signature analysis. Actually, um, I want to document some other things. Like I think we're, I can be able, I should be able to get signatures on these 153s and these 157s and some other stuff. That's why I went down that path um, earlier today, but um, or yesterday or whatever it was. But I kind of do enjoy the signature analysis. But I'm glad I was able to use the flute too to identify. Um, some some decode issues as well. So we had two RAM issues that we figured out with the Fluke. Um, verify we could read to the ROMs. I found this thing here by accident because I thought my signature analysis was jacked up over here somewhere. Um, so I replaced this LS32 and I didn't need to, I think. Um, but whatever. Um, all right. I'll go to the cabinet and we'll power it on real quick. I, I do need to come back and fix the sound. I think there's something wrong with my amplifier on my AR2, so I might actually swap in a different AR2 just to see. All right, back at the cabinet here. Um, obviously, it passes test mode, and I put a different AR in here, and I think it sounds a lot better, so I think there's some, definitely something going on with my AR on the other one. It's definitely not the pokey. I mean, listen to how good that sounds and stuff. And it, even if I crank up the sound all the way, I mean, that sounds really good. And it's all the way down, so let me... the sound it sounds like the amplifier is working way better this is the this is um the one that i put in there i tested the voltage real quick but this one here is the one i took out of it and i don't know why this cap capacitor here is different i don't know if it's a different value or not but i might look at these um i might need to desolder this and also look at this where they tdas or something what are, I don't know what kind of amplifiers. Oh, no, the audio amps are over here, actually, on that side there. Anyway, I might I might look at this, but not in this video, I don't think. I might do it a different video, just redoing this um, AR, because it is original. I'm not going to cap it. I'm going to test the capacitors, and um, I'll also replace this uh, 3055. I'm going to do that in a different video. So, anyway... 
I'll come back. This is it for the Missile Command video. Another board fixed. This is Missile Command board number three, I think. I've, I've been able to fix two, but I haven't been able to fix my original one yet. So, that's it guys. Missile Command number three, fully working. Everything looks good. See you later.